So, one or two of you guys got in touch with me and you told me that when you tried cooking my old portobello mushroom cheeseburger recipe, a whole bunch of water cooked out of the mushrooms making the batter go all soggy and rookie. I'm really sorry about that, but I went back, I did a whole bunch of experiments, I fixed the issue, and I've also replaced the frozen chips with some homemade, really simple to make herb encrusted potato wedges, and I've also added this maple mustard dip, and it's, it's honestly, it's just so good, you're gonna wanna punch someone in the face. <laughs> If you're in the UK and you'd like a fun and convenient way to make this recipe, you can order it as a recipe box from screen to plate. They will send you all of the exact ingredients in the exact measurements with easy to follow instructions. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. Maybe get some friends around, have some fun, a few cheeky beers. It's a great way to support me as a creator if you're in the UK. If you're not in the UK though, all of the ingredients and measurements are in the video so you can still cook it anyway. Enjoy. All right, so inside your meal kit, you'll have all of these ingredients. Preheat your oven to 200 degrees, grab your mushroom and just carefully break off the stem like that, perfect. And then grab a knife and chop off those frilly bits all around the edges so he looks like this. And then use a teaspoon to just lightly scrape off the gills, get rid of that and finish him off until he looks like this, very good. Do the same for that one, that one and that one. Then with a barely damp cloth, give the mushroom a quick wipe just to clean it up a little. Once you've done that, put them all onto a baking tray, sprinkle with a tiny bit of salt over the top and then set that aside. Cool, grab your potatoes, cut in half that way and then cut each half into quarters to make wedges. Do the same for those, very good. Get yourself a bowl and add about three tablespoons of oil, more if you need it. That's our seasoning mix, add as much as you think you need. Go on, get stuck in. Bit more seasoning there, last little mix and there we go. Bring back the baking tray and on go the wedges. That goes into our preheated oven for 10 minutes. Meanwhile, to make the batter, add almost all of your flour to a bowl, leaving a little bit behind just in case of adjustment. Same with the milk, leave just a little bit behind. Mix it all together and you can use the back of the spoon to crush all the lumps. Hmm, little bit too thin there. That may not stick to the mushrooms. Let's get a bit more flour in there, give it a stir, crush those lumps, and yeah, that's looking better. Oh, and don't worry about the very small lumps like that. They'll be fine. Set that aside, grab your breadcrumbs and chop the corner off to let air escape. You'll see why in a second. Now, these are a little bit too big, so I'm gonna set them down and you can use something like a rolling pin or a mug, but I like beans. I'm gonna use them to crush the breadcrumbs and then smash them to death and keep on rolling until the bread crumbs are nice and fine just like that good add those to a bowl and then get your breadcrumb spices add all of those in and then get them incorporated one two three tablespoons of oil which is going to keep the breadcrumbs from burning in the oven add a bit more oil if necessary until it looks a little bit like that okay cool get rid of that and that lay out a tea towel and after the 10 minutes a little bit of water should have cooked out of the mushrooms like this if not get them back into the oven keep an eye on them and once a fair amount of water has cooked out you can then use a cloth or perhaps some kitchen paper to soak it up put the mushrooms onto the tea towel Give that a quick wipe. Wedges go back into the oven for another 10 minutes. Come here, mushrooms. Fold the tea towel over and just lightly press the mushrooms to help remove some more water. Unfold, get them onto a dry patch, fold over and do the same again until they look a little something like that. All right, get the batter, the breadcrumbs and a plate. Now pay attention. This is my batter hand and this is my breadcrumb hand. Got it? Good. Grab a mushroom and into there, cover it with the batter, little shake to get rid of the excess into the breadcrumbs and then use my clean breadcrumb hand to cover the mushroom completely. Pat the breadcrumbs on to help them stick, flip them over, cover again and then pat them on, pick them up, little shake and onto the plate. Separate hands means no big mixed up mushy mess. Okay, mushroom batter breadcrumbs plate, mushroom batter breadcrumbs plate, mushroom batter breadcrumbs plate and mmm, looking good already. Right, so the wedges have been in the oven for 20 minutes now. Hopefully the edges will have started to caramelize a little bit, which they have not. So I'm going to stick them back in the oven for about 5 to 10 minutes until Hmm, yep, we got some brown edges on there. Brilliant. Flip the wedges over and then get the mushroom burgers on there. That goes into the oven for 10 minutes. Meanwhile, grab your buns, cut those in half and then set them aside. Get your tomato and we need one, two, three, four slices. Up they go. Grab your little lettuce and then take off two leaves for the burger. Now you can leave these whole, but I'm going to roll them up and shred them like that. Then chop the rest up and into there. Grab the rest of your tomato and chop them into chunks. In he goes. We got a little bit of vinaigrette. Add as much as you like. Quick little stir to finish a side salad. And now we can claim this whole thing is healthy. Okay, to make the world's best vegan maple mustard dip, add the maple syrup to the vegan mayo along with the mustard, give it a quick mix, pinch of salt and a little bit of cracked pepper, a little mix again and there it is. Now, I don't even like mustard, but trust me, it's really subtle and this sauce is totally awesome. Set that aside and once your burgers have been in the oven for about 10 minutes, flip them over, put your burger buns on the wedges, crust side facing down and then all that goes back into the oven for about 3 minutes. Okay, quickly grab your cheese slices, we included an extra slice in the box 
box for you to munch on. Oh yes, that's very tasty. Now this bit is optional, but you might want to pour just a little bit of oil over the cheese, ensuring you cover all the sides. This just helps the cheese to melt a little bit better in the oven. All right, let's get these guys back out, put the cheese on top of the burgers, and in for the final two minutes, or until it looks something like this. Yeah, baby, cheese is nice and melty, very good, and the bun's lightly toasted, nice. Okay, the best bit. I like to go bottom bun, cheesy mushroom burger, tomato slices, shredded lettuce, cheesy mushroom burger, gherkins, and then I forgot the vegan mayo on this burger, but I remembered it on the other one, so please just use your imagination. I got some caramelized onion chutney on the top bun there, get him on, put a cocktail stick in to stop everything falling over. Just FYI, the cocktail sticks in the meal kit are much bigger than this one. There's our lovely golden brown wedges and our kick-ass sweet maple mustard dip, which you unfortunately can't see in this bright sunlight, stupid sunlight. Side salad there and let's give these a go. Mmm, mmm, oh my god. This sauce is so delicious you could write songs about it. Right, let's take a look inside this bad boy and... Okay, if that's not the most delicious vegan burger cross-section what you've ever seen, then smack my body and call me a mushroom, because this looks amazing to me. And hey, if you want to try this meal kit out for yourself, you know where to find it. Enjoy!